Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video, we will implement the Steam voice chat that you selected on my Discord server. On my Discord server, sometimes I do these polls, so stay tuned. I also want to apologize in advance for the long video release. Before we get started with the video, I'd like to thank my paying Boosty subscriber, Eddie Dover. Thanks for purchasing a big support subscription and donating $50. I'd also like to thank Solution CPP for his donation. Now, onto the video. In this video, as I already said, we will implement Steam voice chat. Yes, yes, yes. Hello? Hello, 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 hello. Can you hear me? Or, to put it simply, positional voice chat. But here there will also be not only positional chat, but also radio mode, or as I call it, global mode. So it will be a combined method. We will also fix known problems with voice chat that arise when working with VOIP talker, such as a crash during seamless server travel, a problem with positional work, quiet voice chat sound and poor sound quality, and more. But I forgot to mention one thing, that there is a problem that leads to a game crash when a player is kicked. This problem will not be solved since I do not have the logic for kicking a player yet. If you are interested, then maybe later in the video about the player list, where I will add the logic for kicking a player and muting the player's voice chat, I will implement a solution to this problem there. But for now, I just mentioned it so that you know that such a problem exists. Let's go. So the first thing we'll start with is setting up configs and enabling voice chat support. To do this, go to the directory where we have the installed engine, go to the config and copy a couple of lines. Also, don't forget that the finished implementation will be on my GitHub repository. But I want to say that it will be in the 5.5 branch. Perhaps I will move the implementation to 5.4 later, when I have time. So, now let's move on to implementing the voice chat. To do this, we will need to add the VOIP talker component to our character and enable its replication. By the way, you can also find all the available VOIP talker functionality in Blueprints by writing voice. Now let's move on to implementation. To do this, we need to create a multicast voice initialization event, which we will then use when the player enters the game. In the initialization, we remove all remote talkers, register our player with the player state for VoIP, and set the necessary settings. With this logic, we can achieve the correct operation of VOIP. Now, since we are using a combined implementation method that includes more than just positional voice chat, we will need to create an enumeration and then rep notify a variable with the voice mode. In rep notify, we will specify the settings for each mode, and during initialization, we will also specify them. Let's not forget to add attenuation for positional mode. Now we move on to adding the radio mode. For the radio, we need to make sure that we have the plugins enabled sound utilities, synthesis, and DSP effects. Unreal Engine 4 has another plugin, Time Synth, which is not available in Unreal Engine 5, but requires enabling for Unreal Engine 4. After that, we will create a source effect preset chain into which we will add our radio effect. And then we will create a source effect preset, filter preset, with these settings for the radio. 
You can experiment with the settings. I took them from one video. Now let's move on to the key designations. On V, we will have positional chat and on R, radio mode. Now let's move on to fixing the crash during seamless server travel. To do this, we will need to use this solution, which the person on the server indicated. Let's create a client RPC that will, depending on the conditions, turn off the voice chat and then clear the voice packets. By the way, such functions where remote is indicated, for example, remove all remote talkers, mute remote talker for their operation, another computer is required since it will not be possible to test these functions on one. Now we need to create a blueprint library of functions for one function to clean up voice packets. To be honest, I don't have a good knowledge of C++ and the engine's reflection system. So we just rewrite the code and sometimes regenerate VS files again and again to index new changes. Now let's move on to creating logic in the player controller. The following logic is muting the sound class for a couple of seconds and then unmuting it. This is necessary in order to avoid the sound of clicks for the player entering the game. This logic will be used for the player controller entering the game. And now regarding the solution to the problem with a quiet voice chat. There are many commands that help increase the volume of the voice chat. I use only this one. 
On the forum, someone liked the combination of the following commands that you see on the screen. By the way, a hint to make it easier for you to test changing audio voice parameters. Once you are done implementing all the logic, you can use the oss.voiceloopback command with a value of zero to disable and one to enable the command. This command will allow you to listen to yourself and the applied audio voice settings for the voice. So you will be able to test without packaging the game in play and editor mode. Here in the screenshot, you can see an example of using this command. Important note, for VOIP, it is important that you use session system and any online subsystem. Of course, maybe not any online subsystem because EOS may have a different voice implementation, but I have not tested this. So as you have realized, the factors I have listed are the criteria for VOIP to work. That is, you will need to create a session to test the applied audio voice settings. Also, the description of each command and more, you can see in the voice config CPP file. So, as you understand, the player controller class will be used for audio voice settings, and you can put different commands there, as you saw on the screen. Now we need to create a sound class mix for the voice chat mute and for the voice chat unmute. Now in the project settings, we need to specify the VOIP sound class. This will be voice. Now regarding fixing the poor sound quality. To do this, it is enough to set a higher value of VOIP sample rate, and this will be a good solution. However, there is another solution, which involves changing a couple of lines in the project configs. I will not do this, as it can lead to undefined consequences. I also want to say that some complained about poor sound quality when using Steam Sockets. Perhaps disabling Steam Sockets can improve the sound quality, but I have not checked this. I also want to say that the main sound setting occurs in the Player Controller class, in the Client RPC, so if you need it, you can use it for other voice commands. By the way, there is also a problem with stuttering, voice interruptions, etc., which makes using voice chat impossible. It is possible that the previous solution which I showed a little earlier with changing a couple of lines in the configs, solves this problem. However, there is also this solution, which you see on the screen. By the way, I want to warn you that if everything works fine for you, there are no problems, stutters, interruptions in the voice chat, then you do not need to use the solutions for fixing lags, stutters, interruptions that I show. I will leave links to the forums in the description of the video and maybe somewhere else, for example, in Discord or on GitHub. In the timer, you can specify any time. For example, I wrote three seconds. Now, after we have created the important events for us in different classes, we need to combine all this in game mode and this will be the main implementation. We will use the on post login event and the event handle starting new player. The event handle starting new player is needed for seamless server travel. The main point is that what we do is check whether the player's pawn is valid or not and then we initialize VOIP for it. So, because we have written everything, the voice is initialized correctly and all the problems are solved. However, later we will also write our implementation for server travel, and we will use our event that we made in the player. Now let's move on to implementing our logic for server travel. In it, we'll use the event we already created in our player, close voice line, which we'll call for each player, 
and then transition to a new map. Let's go back a little and remember. In the last video about server travel, we used the server travel node for this. And now, because we have our own implementation in game mode, I'll create an interface game mode and an interface function, execute server travel. You can use cast before game mode to call our server travel implementation, but I'll use the interface in this case. Now, let's go to our widget where server travel happens with the old implementation and replace it with a call to the interface function. By the way, I forgot to say that for testing the logic in the close voice line event, another computer is needed because it includes the use of a node called remote, remove all remote talkers. And for such nodes, another computer is needed. So, now after we have implemented everything, let's pack our game. Video for shipping build for Steam, you can find on my channel. So, I will say a few words in conclusion before testing. We implemented voice chat in a combined method, where there is both positional and global radio chat. I want to say that it was not that difficult, but I did a lot of testing of different implementations and eventually came to what we have now implemented. I think that using VoIP Talker to implement voice chat is a good solution for small games Cooperative games with four players or something like that, I think you know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, I would recommend using another solution to implement voice chat, like Vivox or something else, if you need advanced functionality and don't want to spend a lot of time with VOI Talker. However, if you have a good knowledge of C++, you can write your own version of VOI Talker to fix existing problems, such as game crash on seamless travel, as well as to extend the functionality. Also. I may leave links to some forums in the description from which I took information or referenced them. I would also like to say thanks to all the testers with whom I spent a lot of time testing. Now let's see how our logic works to close the voice line for each player before seamless server travel. My friend will hold the voice chat button and I will perform the travel. And everything works perfectly. Thank you for watching this video to the end. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss new videos. See you soon.